This is the closest I'll ever get to the cup. You can try it on, Lonzo. I can try it. You can try it on, yeah. Of course you can. <laughs> Ryan Little. <laughs> right, so we're back in all England after a very, very long time. Um, the last time I came here was literally two years ago. Last year was the pandemic, so it's just a whole new feeling, you know, being back at this venue, standing in front of this store. Yo, this is what Lee Chong Wei is using. What, what rap is that? This one's got a bloody external teeth. This time, the stringing machines, the stringing team is over here out on display. I've actually been trying to learn how to string. I bought like a cheap crank machine and I'm doing a very, very bad job. It takes me about like, two and a half hours to be. Sorry, that was mine. Yeah, as I was saying, basically stringing is actually really, really difficult. Like, it takes so long, I keep snapping the string. Basically, Fifi, would you like to review? Yeah, let me just First review. First impressions, reactions to some of these rackets. All right, so, so here we have new, your next, this new Arc Saber 11 Pro. I actually really, really like this new design for the Arc Saber 11 Pro. It actually looks better in person than it does on camera. Um, I'm a really, really big fan of the original Arc Saber 11. You know, it's really even balanced, good for control and good for speed. And I actually haven't tested this one out yet, so, you know, curiosity is right here. And as you can see, you've got, you know, loads of the other top ranges. You've got the Nanoflay 800, the LT. 700, I've put reviews out for them before my channel. Um, here's you've got the Astrox Rangers. Wow, I see my favorite racket. Astrox 100ZZ, that, that, that literally yeah, is the best racket in the world. Like, no one can contest that. And also, as you can see over here, you've got the Astrox 99 Pro in this cherry sunburst color. That is the first time I've seen these rackets in person. Like genuinely, because of the pandemic and I've been busy with university, I haven't been that active in the badminton scene. And um, this is this is very, very refreshing. It makes me happy to be back. What, what, so is this some Inception thing? So you record me while I record you? Why are you recording me? As you can see, we have Ken. We just did a 360 rotational thing. Like Google Maps. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, do you mean the rotational generator system? Yeah, 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 exactly. Series? Exactly. exactly. So, wait, I swear you've got this racket. I swear you got that. Yeah. The is this one? Yeah. Okay, so how do you find this racket? Well, the Astrox 88D Pro. Insanely sluggish, but the power you get off it, like weight wise. How is it sluggish? It is, fam. I've literally tried I have it. the 3U version, it's so so heavy, it's gonna break my arm, man. You're just trash. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so basically, I know I haven't been posting Bampton reviews or just Bampton videos in general, and the thing is, like, making Bampton videos is a hobby for myself, and, you know, the, the career path that I'm trying to go into is not exactly, you know, the same as just being a YouTuber. Um, so this actually makes me even more excited to be back at this massive event to watch these top Bampton players, see this, like, new Bampton equipment. Oh, I see there's loads and loads of different uh, new models for shoes. Um, could you tell us a little bit about different shoes, which one, and uh, which one's suitable for what kinds of players and so forth? So, basically, these are the high end rackets for trainers. Very stability, got extra cushion, top rate shoe, these are the Z3s. Oh, I see the, the tread pattern slightly different from before, isn't it? Yeah. It's not like a hexagon, this is like plus shapes. Plus right. shapes now. But the old ones have still got the hexagon. Mm. So these are much different. These have got one layer cushion. These have got three layer cushion. Three layers. Three layers. That's wow. the difference of the, the Z, these are the normal Z and these are the Z3s. Yeah. As we go down, these are the errors. Mm. But this is not the, the standard one. These are called the error X. Mm. You've got the error Zs, which they haven't got the full cushion in them. They've just got one set of cushion in them. Maybe not many players will be normally wearing these. Mm. I mean, these are the standard, so these are the standard ones, and then only one layer cushion, but they're very good for top standard or not, but no professional player will probably use these. And then obviously we've got the running shoes, which we explained today, and they're quite comfortable. I mean, I've got a pair on, and they, the bow system, so you tighten them up, and then they're very, very cool. cool. Yeah, Fifi has a pair of those. <laughs> The current Bampton shoes I'm using um, is the 65 Z2s. Uh, on occasion, I'll be using the Aeros 3 still. Okay. It's quite old, but they're, they're very comfortable very, shoes. Very, very good. Thank you so much. So thank you very much. Good to have you on the podcast. Okay. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Let's appreciate it.
When the players enter the stadium, the whole atmosphere is just absolutely buzzing. I swear you got a sore throat. What happened? Did it just fix yourself after he just came out? Lizzie Jabola! Come on! So it's been a very, very long time since I've played this challenge. It's been a couple years. So I'm curious, has my reaction time gotten better or worse as I've gotten older? I'm, I'm representing um, Thailand? Yeah. No. You just assume my race, but I'm representing Thailand. I'm playing later. It's just that I haven't gotten changed yet, but. Oh no, probably you should be playing for Indonesia because they are quite good, you know. Indonesia, Indonesia is quite good. You can switch countries. Into yeah, you can. Yeah, you can switch to whatever you want. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Good, good, good. What's your name? Me. Are you famous on YouTube? No. I'm a full-time YouTuber with four subscribers. I'm actually really poor. Okay, so basically, uh, we came up with a, with a very, very smart strategy. So, this is meant to be for one person and to test the reactions. We're going to smoke the leaderboard with this strategy. Just you guys are we didn't even beat. What did we you didn't beat Come on! What was our score? You see, this is why we're on the reserve list. Yeah. Are you joking me? Yeah. We have four people and we still lost. Are you joking? Can you stop? You haven't played any years. Nah, nah, nah. Basically, right, basically right. teamwork is dream work, yeah? That's not literally like a group effort. Alright, let me, let me try it by myself. I reckon I can do better. Bro, what is it? Very good. Okay. Very good. Okay. That's, You're the same time that's not bad. Yeah, that's better. That's better. That's that's better. Is that actually? Yeah. Of course. Can you just be me? Well, basically, it just goes to show you, yeah, I'm like naturally talented. <laughs> Do you mind writing your name? Three on the leaderboard. What's going on? No, you're a guy. So I'm, I'm going to be the yeah. What does that mean? It means... It means you just compete me and I'm a girl. Stop it. You shouldn't be that proud of me. Gender inequality instantly resolved. Yeah. Hello. Oh my god. Right. Hello, hi. Good to see you, man. How are you doing, man? How are you? Hello. Oh, yeah, you should. Yeah, good, good. Let, let's see, let's see. Let's see your. I don't, I don't have. I literally missed one. I'm so sure you need Brixton something? Brixton bullies. Bullies. Oh. Whoa, you're a, you're a bully. You're a bully. No, man. Huh? Are you sure? Yeah, basically, basically. Oh, I didn't say, say him. Where is it? <laughs> That's me. At the moment, I'm at the Yonix Lounge, which is the exclusive upstairs area. Um, this is a trade room where you know, they showcase all the new products. Um, as you can see here, there's the tennis products. And if we go further down, uh, we can see some stuff about Legends Vision, uh, the firm itself. And over here you have some food and drinks for people. Right here is a photo board. Looking over into the badminton section, the most exciting part obviously. Um, here we can see some bags, quite a big range of the different styles. Um, you've got some apparel and um, wow. You can see a huge Astrox 99 Pro in the white colorway. Wow. I wonder if this has a rotational generator system in it. And I see it's strong with an aerobite. Well, it doesn't really have the aerobite texture though. Look at the different racks you can see here. Um, you've got the top of the range Astrox rackets. And then you've got you know, some of the older ones like even the Astrox 77 in a newer colorway. 
and then you've got the Nana Ray range and the Voltric range. All very, all very, very cool. And um, well, the star of the show, Arc Saber 11 Pro, the newest release. Let's have a closer look at the racket itself. Got to say, in person, it looks miles better than it does on camera. Now on camera, I think the design's okay, but you know, you really got to appreciate the engineering when you have it in hand. Over on this side, you see a bit more tournament apparel. Uh, you have the practice and the team apparel, and uh, here's the women's section. And um, yeah, look, here you've got some strings, some other accessories, all very, very cool. And you've got, you know, the lower ranges like the B series and the junior series with the external T joints. Lovely. Um, you've got a couple of shoes going on. 65Z. Yeah. Very, very cool experience to be in the Yonex trade room. Every single year they update it with new products. So it's like walking into a whole different place every single time I'm here. Over in this corner, we can see a conference room. Uh, right now it's not set up with stuff. It's just a table with some gone off milk. But basically here, you know, players and other people, they just come over for some briefings. And yeah, that's the Yonex trade room for you. Also, just one more thing. Look at the view. You can see straight out of the stadium. Kind of see my reflection there. Hello. And uh, yeah, nice sunny day, good weather. Well, in England, it always rains. So it's always very, very good to see some sun. Right, I've got something really special to show you guys. Behind these doors is the VIP special lounge to watch the badminton. So let's go through and have the view. I know it's super dark here right now, so you can't really see, but this is essentially overlooking the entire stadium. Quite nice. I know it's quite a long way from the courts, but sometimes having a very, very high angle is quite nice. Watching an Indonesian badminton match without Fodlon screaming in the background is just so different. Every single year I'm just too used to it, so it actually feels a bit weird. Right, this is game point. Oi! The rallies in this match is absolutely crazy. This is like they're flying all over the place. Good morning everyone. So we are back at the All England Arena right in the centre stage. As you can see behind me, this is the finals day court. Um, everything's being set up at the moment. It's very, very early on in the morning. And it's actually really, really cool to see the behind the scenes because at the face, you know, front of the actual arena and the event, you just see like the lovely flashing lights, the, you know, the, the matches and so forth. But behind the scenes, really 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 like want to emphasize on the efforts you know by everyone setting up the arena um there's so much work just to make this event work every single year wow look at this huge camera that's actually really really cool like every time i watch the uh, sporting events i'm just shocked at how much zoom these cameras can go for and um, so much clarity and it takes so much skill as well think about it like these athletes are moving around at such speed and they're able to capture it all in motion and just standing in the middle of this entire arena just really get a sense of how enormous the stadium is and when everything's you know filled up or everyone's just in the audience stands to be able to function at high performance under high pressure it really takes skill so as you can see right here, we have the umpire chair. Really, really cool because normally people don't get to get this close. Um, but also right here we have where the players put their bags um, to keep their rackets and so forth during the matches. And um, if you notice right next to uh, the court, you can see these tiny, tiny little cameras. So looking over this side, you can see that's the area where the players walk out. Wow, what a place, what an absolute place. 
just really want to emphasize the effort shown by people every single year they make the effort to change up the walkout uh, just a little bit to give the event a bit of spice and you know this setup is not easy to change it and come up with the, the ideas the implementation here are the chairs uh, where like the CEOs and directors and high-ranking people uh, normally sit during the games to to watch courtside um, I did an interview here in one of my previous vlogs um, talking about the perception of badminton uh, with one of the All England people over here and the general consensus is that badminton is a very very underrated sport you know it's a very, very fast-paced high-intensity sport and yet people still think it's just a garden game or a leisure center game and it's just such a shame that's why I always emphasize to people well you just need to have a look at some badminton games and you might think something different also looking here you see this massive camera crane amazing piece of gear this is actually crazy so this is actually how they get um, the really, really cool aerial shots of the stadium. Um, it looks like a drone almost uh, when it's just hovering around. Wow, just looking at these cameras compared to mine. Well, makes mine look like a toy camera. Just getting a closer look at the walkout. Whoa, just testing out some lights like this. Very, very cool. Or well, whoever's doing the lights. Perfect timing. So now just giving you guys a shot from the player's perspective. Just look at the stadium. When you watch the games uh, on TV, you just see such tight angles, you know, focus on the court. When you're in the stadium, you're just in the stands and it's really, really hard to appreciate. Like, the sheer size, you know, of the stadium is crazy. If we take a closer look at this camera, you can see they have a screen where they do the viewfinding. There's so many, so many different uh, controls on this camera. I don't even know what any of them do. Um, my camera is pretty yeah, simple, point and shoot it. pretty much, with some manual controls. This is the final score. Wow. It feels surreal to be standing here, I can't like look. Touching the finals court. Oh, oh. I've got to say though, in terms of like the, the court material, uh, the usual surfaces that I play on, they're quite slippery. Uh, in clubs, you usually have like the wooden flooring, which is usually quite dusty uh, for most you know, lower level. I would like to say lower level, because compared to this kind of stuff, anything is low level. And the rubber courts that we play on is usually quite glossed up because you know there's a lot of wear and tear but here this rubberized material actually feels quite rough to the touch that explains why players get a lot of traction and that's definitely needed for you know this kind of level of play you can't be slipping up on the fundamentals this is the seat um, where the service judge um, basically gauges whether the service of the players match the requirements of the sport and uh, let's go from this perspective you can see this ooh, from this uh, glass panel they have a line the thing is by having this kind of gauge with this glass panel um, it kind of sets the standard for you know what your service should be before the rules were like oh you need to be on your lower rib or something like that but it's very very hard to tell where somebody's lower rib is through their shirt and everyone's anatomy is different at first that change was kind of disputed because everyone's different in height and um, you know people get advantages from being taller um, because simply they're born that way um, just like in many aspects of sport and outside of sport as well people will have advantages I guess with this thing it would hinder some players because taller players will have to crouch down and it's less natural for them and shorter players or they might get a slight boost in terms of the height where they can serve from so it kind of works both ways but either way you know I just think after some implementation this is a very very good idea and yeah they're just testing some music and stuff like that so one thing that's um, noticeable behind the scenes is actually the sponsor boards so if we look behind us we have uh, a rack of lower sponsor boards and above it you have another rack and the reason why the other side doesn't have this and only has a lower rack is because 
up there is where they have like the big TV cameras, you know, the view that you normally see when you're watching the matches. So in order to get, you know, all the sponsorships in, they get a high level on that. Looking at this area over here, well, this actually brings back a lot of memories. You know, the days when you know, I'll just be perched up here with Budline and Fifi, um, you know, waiting for the players to finish their game and then walk past and give out autographs. Yeah, as a true badminton fan, that, that was like a moment to remember. So after they finish their game, they head through these curtains and they go behind the scenes. And um, well, this, this internal structure of the building is very, very complex. So if we go to this side, then you've got the halls where you know, all the administrative stuff is done, like anti-doping, you've got a press room, you've got you know, equipment room and so forth. Also, um, over here, behind these doors, as you can see over there, there's like, I think the doors are locked, but um, that's another press room. And that room is usually where the players go immediately after they step off the court to give some coverage, to talk about the experience on court and so forth. And you'll usually find these clips online. Zooming into the distance, we can also see some uh, you know, control panels for the media um, tucked away into the corners of the crowd. Um, if we look up even more over this side, we can see even more, you know, press rooms, media rooms, and so forth. This is the Norwich All England Open Manager Championships 2022 Finals Final. Sorry for not there. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm so happy to see you again. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything really. I can't really give you anything today no, no, because no, no, I'll see no, you no. some next week. I'm just happy to see you. Yeah, yeah. no worries. No Congratulations. Worries. Once again. But uh, yeah, thanks for the support and everything. Yeah. It still has a racket from last time. Yeah. It's all at home, whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'll just come here. Back. You still have the bracket from last time. Are you taking a video right now? You can try it on also. Victor, I can try it. You can try it on, yeah. Of course you can. No problem. Tanuga. 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 Wow. This is the closest I'll ever get to the cup. Don't worry. So, yeah. Hey guys, really happy to have won the All England for the second time. <laughs> Thank you so much for the support to uh, whoever supports me out there. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, watch some more YouTube from this channel. <laughs>